On today's episode, I'm gonna be sharing some of my poetry and music with you I wrote throughout my addiction. I'm gonna share the backstories of these pieces and why they came out the way they did. And I'm releasing a brand new music video of a song I wrote about the emotions I had right before I got saved. There is gonna be some pre-saved language in this episode, so viewer discretion is advised. I'm Adam Vibe Gutton, and this is The Recovered On Purpose Show. The black represents the darkness from which we came. The white represents the light in which we now live. And the red represents the passion it takes to live Recovered On Purpose. All right, guys, today's episode is brought to you by Recovered On Purpose. Recovered On Purpose was founded with the mission of raising up an army of addicts just like you to tell their stories in powerful and impactful ways to free others suffering from the bondage of addiction, as well as tell our stories in the school system to deter the future generations from going down the path of addiction. If this sounds like you, if you drive with this message and you want to get your story out, send a message to me on this page. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what you want to do. I'm looking for people that want to do live interviews on my page as well as do interviews for this show right here. I love you guys so much and I'm really excited to talk to you. All right guys, so the reason why I'm doing this episode, I didn't really know if I was going to ever share uh, these videos, ever share my poetry and and that kind of stuff just because it's a a past part of me, right? But the whole whole point of Recovered on Purpose is sharing our stories um, in an impactful way, right? some of, these, some of these videos take me back um, to, to a time when I was, I was really suffering, right? There were, there, were, there were points in my life where um, the only way I could express myself was through uh, poetry or maybe even rapping and things like that. Um, and I felt like I would do an episode where I, where I shared the backstories of, of these pieces and share the pieces with you. So some of you may know and some of you may not if it's your first time to the show that uh, I had a really traumatic experience when I was 19 years old. Uh, On September 28th, 2008, I had been out partying and drinking like most nights of my freshman year of college, uh, when I woke up to my phone ringing and vibrating down by my leg. I swam through the sheets to find my cell phone with the bright screen that read 4.47 a.m. and my best friend Chucker was calling me. And I remember having the conscious choice that I could either answer the phone like I always do with, hey, what's up, Chuck? Or I could answer the way I was feeling with, "Uh, hello? In my still drunken state, I chose the latter, to which a soft voice replied, hey, what's up? Why are you calling me this late? I was just calling to say hi. Don't call me this late again. And I hung up on him, and he shot himself. For nearly a decade, just about eight years, I was unable to share that story with anyone as I bottled it down deeper and deeper with drugs and alcohol. I wasn't able to tell anybody that I killed my best friend. That was the way that I thought for so long. And this is really what fueled a, a drug addiction um, that wasn't just like partying like it was in high school and part of college, but this really took me to a dark place where I, I started coping with life, coping with the way things happened with drugs and alcohol. And this is the first thing that happened in my life that really had me knowing that's why I was using drugs. And now this piece that I'm about to share, Apologies, um, I used to listen to this song, um, uh, One Republic, uh, Apologize, and and it really touched my heart because I would would think about suicide myself all the time. Um, I don't know if it was birthed from from what happened with Chuck, I don't know if it was birthed uh, from before that or or the immense amount of drug drug addiction I was doing, Um, but this, this, uh, this piece I'm about to share with you was actually the first time that I began sharing what actually happened that night. For eight years, I didn't tell anybody about that phone call. After I recorded this piece, I began telling people about the phone call, um, and that actually started Road to Freedom. So check this out, apologies.
Maybe I'll just draw this all up in one hit, put it in and be done with all this shit. Or maybe this 32 that Chuck used could be my escape too. Or maybe this telephone cord could hardwire me to another place too. I try to say I'm sorry, but it's too late and you hardly hear me. I just hear myself and see myself in everyone's shoes because they're done with the shit too. Why is it I'm always searching for the next way to die? Why can't you just chill in the present and be alive? Gunshots ringing in my ears. I die in my dreams and the sound disappears. Cheers to the good life. I'm happy you live it. I'm sick and tired of being pulled down and not uplifted. Shift it in another direction. One, two, or maybe infinite. This trick shit just loads my 32 clip. I miss you, but I'm too fucking late. You moved, you left, and my ground began to quake. Fuck, the thoughts won't shut up, and just my luck. I got this thing called depression. I don't get to answer the why me question. I just keep taking this voice as a lesson. I'm not afraid to die. Fuck it. I guess it's hell's way to fry. 28, is it too late? I apologize for everything I've done, but this life is led by fate. Everything I've learned, I've learned is not enough. It's rough having dreams where you die and you're burned. But it's all this perspective. I love life now. I'm spirit prospecting. I'm respecting what I've got. Trying to quit these thoughts. of running towards gunshots thinking I'll die saving you and get the off to meet God. Not for work for the good people crew. My whole family too. I would have smoked myself and this body would have been through. And my spirit would have been having to do. So until next time, I need to say sorry. Or sit down and attempt a real apology. Take this as it is. It's too late to change it. All I can do is take my life and rearrange it because it's too late to apologize. It's too late. It's too late to apologize. It's too late. Crazy thing is, when you rearrange your life, you're not only living, but now you're alive. Now for the first time, I'm with thoughts about clotheslines, bringing me up to dry like another mean in this cry. Help. Help me, please. It's just myself and this fucking disease. Again and again, I'm like a robot. I control my thoughts. I put on my me, but by something I just can't see. I can only feel. It's tough to deal with running impressions. My soul's compressed in. I can't get it out as I shout and scream. I'm having these dreams. No one is listening to me because I'm useless in the grand scheme of things to anybody but me. None else even sees me. They never fucking believed in me. And now it's too late to apologize. It's too late. It's too late to apologize. It's too late. Apologies for all the fucked up shit I did. I was just a kid. And I'm still just a kid. Trapped in his body with the man's fist Slit wrist bullets to the head I wish I'd fall asleep and never get out of bed But fuck this shit It's finally time to get uplifted I'm gifted with something to give I know everybody dies but it's my turn to live Cause it's too late to apologize <laughs> Sorry <laughs> Sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, guys, so obviously you can see from that piece uh, that it was a pretty emotional time for me. And I remember when I actually recorded that, that video in Trevor's basement, there had been a, a, a flood, like some rain flood and everything, so that basement looked like somewhere where I would be shooting up. And I don't know if you noticed in the, in the video, there was, there was a spoon on the table, there was an empty uh, liquor bottle. I was basically trying to portray to everybody that like all I had in my life was, was these notebooks that I was writing in and, and telling my story, and I didn't know if I was gonna make it out of this. And I was sitting there, and basically what I was trying to portray in the video was that I was writing a suicide note. And I was saying, I'm bye, I'm so sorry about this. Um, so I hope you guys like that. Now this next piece is called Lost Souls. And this was birthed from, uh, as I was out there in my addiction, I, I met so many amazing people. Yes, we were all suffering from, from addictions, and yes, uh, we, some of us were homeless and, and that kind of stuff, but the stories I heard out there um, just inspired me so much that, like, that we, we have gone through so many things. Like a lot of people uh, in, in the world have no idea um, the types of traumas that can lead people to addiction. And I remember um, this, this one kid that I met 
that um, that the first verse of this, the first part of this is is about. And everybody that I that I tell stories about in my in my poems or in my raps or whatever, they've all given me permission to tell tell their stories. So this next one is actually uh, true stories of two young men that I met throughout my addiction. Um, and this one is called Lost Souls. Check this out. These are all stories, full nonfiction. Tales of wandering souls lost in addiction. The past is all that's had when tomorrow ain't predicted. Always present sorrow, death is on the Christmas wish list. Look. It's a tough, handsome play, growing up like no one loves you. Mom trying to get you while you hide inside the bathroom. Seven years old and younger brothers minus two. You're protecting him, hoping doors protect you. Then a knife comes through and you scream, Mom, I'll clean my room. And this is normal, or so you learn. Karma burns, what did kids do to deserve this? Broke away from literal chains and they judge you because you're homeless? Different perspectives, like what a home is. You bum cigs and lift spirits, isn't that what love is? You trust all this 13 years after seven, till the call, which reminded of your promise. Old turns new when you learn you can't protect him, because demons got him and now his life is spent in prison. Miss him, wishing to go with him, counting 10 friends need protection in hotel rooms that you've rented, said you'd keep him warm and meant it. I want to take the pain away. 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 If I could take the pain away from all the addicts that are suffering and put it on myself by spending eternity in hell, I'd sign the contract with both realms and go today and say I'm happy with the hand that I was dealt. But I can't. Just an old soul trapped in a body of neglect. Respect demanded by a man in his ego. Evil shows uncontrolled from those shown a throne by God locked in man's dungeons getting shock treatment. Give it a confused spirit lifted to the ceiling. I battle, I battle, I battle and I always lose. Suffering in pain I can't explain. This is what I choose. I'm an unlit fuse left by an eight ball bomb. I cruise the streets looking for maternal things. I tell my one and only that I love her to her eyes and at night I sleep. Wishing to die, never to wake up and never to remember memories. So I gotta do what I gotta do. I checked this mic but learned to talk at age grade two. I've got a story that I've gotta get out. Vibes eyes cry as I scream into the sky. Too bad he can't talk back when I'm yelling, can you hear me? I was fourth born, thrown to the floor. One kid's depends, had to stretch more than four score. Mama fed her baby cocaine lace milk meals. Mama never hugged me to show me love was real. Mama never bothered teaching me not to rob and steal. I was told to take a nap in fourth grade, so give me my hourly wages that are unpaid. Money couldn't save me cause I'm carrying a dollar to my name. Shame from my heart for where my thoughts keep going. Feelings darker than the eyes behind my blue mask. Tasked with a mindset that everyone is evil. Attracted padded rooms doomed to prove my point. Coined eyes by Hades, I'm taking everybody with me. Save for a blink of an eye until I saw through. Graduated high school, something adoptive siblings didn't do. True to my heart, an empty mass in my chest. But I guess what could I expect when I'm just an addict. I'm not just an addict. Alright guys, so as you can see uh, from that video as I walk off, right, I, I don't believe that that the identity of taking on that we're addicts, right, or or society looking at us as we're just addicts. I don't believe that. We're so much more than that. Even, even when we're suffering from our addictions, even when we're, when we're using drugs and we're addicted, we, we have these incredible, incredible stories, these things that people don't know about us that are deep down. Like, like my story with Chuck, the thing, that, the thing that happened that completely altered my life, right? Nobody knew that that's what I was suffering with. And once I was able to start getting that out, Right? I, was, I was able to start the process to honesty, to, to freedom from this, from this thing I'd been bottling down deeper and deeper for so long. And 
the point of that last one, I, I wanted like they, some of these things, like I was the first one they told about this stuff, like about literally getting shock treatment for, for um, mental issues or whatever was going on there. Um, and those types of things, like they need to get out. Our stories, whether, whether we ever get clean and sober or not, um, some of the traumas, some of the, like sex trafficking or, or abuse in the home and these different things that are leading people to addiction, right? Even people that don't get clean and sober, their stories deserve to get out as well. And that was kind of my heart with, with that last one. So guys, uh, I'm gonna do a quick commercial break with you. Uh, I would love to give stu some stuff away in this break. So give me just a minute and we'll be right back with two more uh, poems and one of them is actually a brand new music video that I shot. Uh, I didn't know if I was gonna shoot any more music videos or do any more poems or anything in my sobriety because I just have, have altered away from this form of my life, but I did decide to shoot this one because it expresses so much of what I was feeling at the end of my addiction and at the very end of it, I say how I got saved. See you guys in just a second. All right guys, today's episode is brought to you by Recovered On Purpose. Recovered On Purpose was founded with the mission of raising up you guys to tell your stories in powerful and impactful ways to deter the future generations from going down the path of addiction. This starts by telling our stories to each other, by getting comfortable telling our stories in a powerful way that's gonna impact addicts suffering to get hope to move out of that phase of their life. And then once we get comfortable and once we know our story powerfully, we're gonna be able to go into the school system and tell our stories to the kids to deter them from going down this path, right? So this is why I'm sharing these parts of me with you, these pieces of art that I did throughout my addiction and one of them uh, afterwards. And the reason why I'm sharing these is to show you like, I'm being vulnerable too. Like me sharing my story um, is just as, just as hard and just as scary as it is for any of you, right? So I wanna encourage you to shoot me a message here. Tell me a little bit about yourself and if you'd be down for a live video with me or possibly be even interviewed for this show. Guys, um, I am going to be giving away, let's say, I like the number seven. I'm gonna give away seven of these tank tops right now. Recover, I am recovered on purpose. On the back, it says, the shirt on my back for the addict in need. Obviously, we are going into springtime right now, so these are gonna look really good on you guys out there in the hot weather. Uh, so if you want one of these shirts, share this video out on your platforms, on your pages, in your groups, um, and comment tank top, let's go, right below. I'll see you guys in just a second. All right guys, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So this next one, um, this one I, I, I ended up titling a beautiful life beyond. And some of you may have seen this one. Uh, I actually released this video for my one year clean and sober. And some of you have seen, uh, that have been with me for a while, have seen that every year on my sobriety date, I, I try to do something to give back. On, on the first year, I released this video. Um, it ended up getting like, this is before I was doing any of this uh, stuff online, but it ended up getting like 30,000 views on my personal page. Um, and then on year two, November 6th of 2019, I published my book. And then November 6th of 2020, I launched this show. So this was actually the first thing that I released to, to give back on my sobriety birthday. And the whole point of this one was I was trying to express the mind of, of an addict, the mind of what's going on with us when we're actually using. And I, I remember sitting down and I wrote this entire thing in, in one sitting. I just sat there and I just wrote it all out on my phone, on my notes. Um, and I remember I was actually upstairs in a cabin um, in Red Lodge, uh, Montana. And I remember just sitting there and it just like came out because I was feeling so much um, at that time in my life. I, I knew that I was stuck in this addiction. I, I knew I didn't know what to do. And I had all these different resentments and beliefs and, and these diff the, 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 the way I thought about government, the way that I thought about, um, about the whole idea of addiction and, and, and the way that I thought about myself is all expressed in this video, A Beautiful Life Beyond. A 
I've been floating on down this familiar hole. Where's the bottom at? Scary thing is, I just don't know. The lowest of lows from three years ago are one choice away from being beaten tomorrow. Sorrow. Lately, I'm on edge. I made a pledge to some friends, brought it down with a binge, and I cringe when I think what could have possibly been. Solitude. Locked in a prison, within a windowless prison, except closed eyes, visions of success, in the ensuing test by psychiatrists of a sickness diagnosed only when confessed, from deep in your chest has been pressed with the rest of the mess that I thought of as my burden of potential. I found the cure for myself was to be potential less. A seemingly outside perspective which I've used much less. It's like I've been living in a sequel to 2012. Hell, on its way back. And all I really had to do was throw a penny in the well. No matter the size, life's waves and its tides. My life is my life and I have the ability to decide. So where's that fine line we decide to give up? Like the other 9 out of 10 addicts on a corner with a tip cup, what's up? Can I get a quick handout? These daydreams were eating me while the reality got loud. I've got rages and fits again and I'm always wondering when life is going to look up and maybe I can make amends and how am I going to pull myself out or am I getting close to the end? And did God send me to die or did he send me to live? If this is life, I'd rather die like my friends and I'm leaving my girl because I'm bringing her with. It's tough to thrive when I've got a mind like this. It's probably time for a conscious shift. How was it to put myself through this again? I'm running down the freeway, blood boiling with nitroglycerin. A ticking time bomb looked at like a loose cannon. I jump off these cliffs, but why do I keep landing? I've heard a saying. If you aren't living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. I've constantly jumped off of it thinking my life is a waste. And I shiver when I tiptoe in this mountainous air. Unaware of my present. Because the future isn't there. Here, where, does anyone really care? My future has been my past due to present judgments and shares. My hair sticks up feeling a kid taping a sign on my back to wear. Kick me. I'm an addict. And like I said, no one really cares to help me take it off of there. I'm sorry I'm an addict. I'm sorry for my habits. I'm sorry I live this way. Take my life. You can have it. It's like I'm stuck in a game of limbo. Trying to fit under this beam I set so low. The only possibility for me would be me lifting this thing so high that the judges couldn't see. And you may believe addiction is genetic or acquired. And it probably was best when that dude you knew got fired. But please, for the sake of every spiritual or other type of belief, do unto sufferers of this as if it's the others you do unto for you. Know that the hope or less may just start with you. We are crying inside for attention of difference. Whispers from lost acquaintances to friends, past tense. When addicts are suffering from activism, this system promotes opinion as if it is wisdom. Trust must be lost, but trust the love that you've got. We miss you terribly, but our heart's mind has forgot. Don't be afraid to send a quick text. Just tell us you love us. Ask what's next. And they say home is where the heart is. I say there's many capable leaders acting heartless. Start with the knowledge that this machine was originally meant to be a new land over the sea, away from tyranny where all men are equal and free. But now within this country's judicial system, drug addicts are criminals instead of possible victims. Possible trapped souls crying for help to be unleashed, but instead of release, sent to a deeper level of hell in the form of a jail cell. Felonious covers for these books unread, unheard, except by a judge and a panel of jurors, selected only after a background check to ensure. They look for guilt or innocence, instead of a cure. As I end this, I do it in this present tense. This system isn't rehabilitating the true issue. 
It is society's uneducated and misguided way of saying a debilitating disease is easier pegged, doomed to die, and categorize these trapped spirits crying eyes with selective deafness to their cries for guidance. Rather than realizing we are nothing less than potential's next best kept secret. I'm proud of my life's many lessons, but I'm leaving that label here. You can keep it. So as you can see guys uh, on that one as well, I end it by walking off and saying we do recover because the whole point of it is like, uh, I wrote that in my addiction, those things were going on, those, those beliefs, those resentments, all those thoughts and feelings and everything were going on, but we are able to recover from that. We're able to get past that. We are, we're able to get clean and sober, right? And, I, and part of the reason why I wanted to release that one as well is to remind people and to show people that I really do get it. Like I was there, I was 148 pounds. I'm 215 now, I was 148 pounds, homeless, kicked out of a homeless shelter and unable to stop using these drugs. And I had all these ways of thinking, all these ways of feeling that I wanted, I, I released that so that people know that as I continue to progress in my sobriety, like I'm never gonna forget where I came from. All right, so this last one, uh, I'm actually really excited to share with you guys. Uh, the, the production behind this is gonna be a little bit different because it's brand new. Um, but we, this, this video, this, uh, this poem, this rap, this song was actually written um, sometime like in the last uh, six to eight weeks of my addiction. And I remember like, um, I, I was so sick, I was so tired, I was so done with this, but there was like, there was nothing I could do. I, my mind was running, my, my emotions were running, my powerlessness was, was crazy, I, I felt it, I knew that there was really nothing I could do. And sometimes the only way that I knew how to express myself, because I was alone, I was, I was a loner, the only way I knew how to express myself, myself was to sit and write. And sometimes um, this is how it comes out. And now this one um, will we'll share with you kind of the, the emotions and the thoughts behind them of where I was at at the end of my addiction. And then what's really cool about this and the reason why I released this is because uh, after listening to this in my sobriety, I realized that at the end, I actually share what ended up saving me. So check this out, it's called Emotional. Just say 
opinion statement, sorry what I did Silence in a room filled with people conversating Believe me when I try to leave, it's hard for me to breathe Learn to pinch my inner thigh cause I couldn't cut me Pain is humanity, uh, what are we discussing? Death is but a dream and this life is our lucidity God created me so creativity is divinity If you could see through my eyes and feel my empathy You'd take the cotton out your ears and try listening So mind you must subject to it My will will be the predicate So mind you must subject to it Searching for my blessing Looking for someone to help with it Speaking to the mirror But unable to reflect with it When you lend your ear I give you my heart I break that mirror Just to cut it out with the shards Dark bathroom Light creeping underneath the door Lock me in Feeling burning underneath the floor I'm screwed up from the neck up Wonder when all this will let up Step up one I fix that piece of mirror Saying seven years Ford is coming at me now from a lot of different angles I'd rather fuck it all up than be held really accountable Change my mind but not my hurdles Looking insurmountable No human answers working Searching in my bible All right, guys. So as you can see from that, um, obviously my 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 solution ended up being found uh, in God, in in the Word, in Jesus. I ended up having a a, a crazy encounter with Him that saved me. Um, and what started it for me was a was a searching and an honest seeking uh, for Him in the Word, in prayer, and uh, in the rooms, in all kinds of ways. It just ended up with me honestly, with everything in me, seeking God, right? And guys, I want to thank you so much uh, for being here for me. Like this, this, was, um, this was something that I didn't know I wanted to do. And now that I'm doing it, I'm really excited that, that I get to share uh, this piece of me because um, a lot of times I'm, 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 I'm working at being a, a different person than I was in the past. I, I don't want to be a rapper. I don't want to be a, a poet with my life. Um, but this is a piece of me and a piece of my story that um, I'm really excited that I got to share with you guys. And I'm really grateful that you were here for it. So I love you guys so much. Um, I hope you got something out of this. And if nothing else, like I hope that you guys uh, share your stories in, in the powerful way that you have within you. I love you guys so much. I'll see you soon. The black represents the darkness from which we came. The white represents the light in which we now live. And the red represents the passion it takes to live recovered on purpose.